How close are we to having the standards that we need for this gentleman to be comfortable? Well, I can tell you, because I'm, I'm involved in this every week with a lot of the, the um, employees from the, these other companies, and uh, right now, we've already got about a year and a half behind us in terms of the effort to really focus on what problem we're really trying to solve. Not just try to reinvent SDI, but really plan for the future, as Clyde has mentioned earlier. And I believe that probably by the end of this year, we're actually going to have the recommended uh, stand, uh, rec the recommendations for what the, what the uh, components should be. It won't be a standard yet, but it'll be right on the edge of, a, of going towards the standards bodies. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's talk a little bit about the migration path itself and how you get there. Um, obviously, planning is in order, but if I can't, I have a facility and I, I can't, as we mentioned before, just make that greenfield change to an IP operation. What, how to start? How do you start? What's the best place to start? What, what should I look at as I have to replace equipment? And I think that might be the place where Will we need some temporary standards, for example? Will we need new wrappers? What will we need during that hybrid period that may last for 10 years? Well, for, from, a, from an equipment supplier standpoint, I think it's a, a little bit different than, than, than our business partners here. I mean, the, the, the most important thing that we did over the last 18 to 20 months was to untether a very proprietary-oriented software stack on a proprietary hardware architecture. That in itself, I'm just telling sure. you from an equipment supplier, was not easy. And, and I think that's the single biggest challenge that I think our industry faces today, which is why there's going to be some drag with some of our peers, because there's a lot of proprietary software that's been tethered to hardware, and it's not easy to untether that. We successfully have done that, mm -hmm. and obviously it's the reason why we're promoting it heavily, right. because we feel like we're a couple years ahead of, of where the industry really is from a technology perspective. It's where the industry needs to be. That, that's a really hard thing to do. But once you've done that, then you can take advantage of all the standard off-the-shelf common computing platforms and storage and compute that's really going to give our partners, our business partners, an opportunity to scale their networks and, and to be able to participate in new revenue-generating opportunities that don't exist today. And it's I, I appreciate your insight. I'm actually an IT guy, so forgive my, na my naivety, if you will, to the TV industry on this side. I've been in IT since it was called MIS, so I've been around a very long time and completely agree with everything you're saying. But my real question is, I'm dealing with a lot of vendors at our stations, traditional TV vendors, who are having a great deal of resistance in getting into this world. And uh, quite frankly, in, in the vein and the spirit of Innovator's Dilemma, this has the potential within it to destroy these businesses. Kind of what's your perspective on that? Well, I, I, that's what I said. I mean, I think there's you know, some selfish aspects to that. I mean, I think it has a lot to do with, you know, where, you know, the technology suppliers are on the innovation curve. I mean, you know, Imagine spent 26% of sales over the last 18 months trying to get ahead of this curve. It's not easy to do. We spent $100 million last year in, in innovation, and you have to be willing to make the investment. Uh, this, is, this is early on not about necessarily efficiencies and cost savings. It's really about being able to you know, participate in a market to create a, a new set of revenue generating opportunities that today uh, our, our customers aren't able to participate in. So it's, it's not going to be easy for the smaller suppliers, I don't think, um, which is why I, I, I personally am a, a big believer that, you know, we, we certainly need to see some of the larger suppliers uh, continue to be healthy and, and survive because uh, there's a lot of innovation that's going to be required. I think we'll see. Yeah, if, um, if experience is any teacher from all the transitions that we've seen, you know, from analog to digital, from from uh, SD to HD, from file-based or from linear to file-based, each one of those transitions went faster than the last one. Mm -hmm. And we never replicated the old technology in the new one. We took pieces that we did and we found a whole new world in the new space. You're 100% right. right. And I think this one's going to go faster than anybody imagined. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Yes. The challenge is, is this. I think we've all learned big lessons from this, right? So the initial file-based workflows, I don't know anybody that didn't try to replicate the tape-based workflow right. with a file-based workflow right. and didn't reduce costs and didn't get all the benefit and then rapidly realized, oh, we can change. But it's hard to change the people. Now we've learned those lessons, and I think this one will speed up dramatically because we've learned a lot of those lessons to try to not to replicate old workflows. And that's and why not replicating SDI with IP specifically 
uh, that, that, would be, that would have been a bad idea. Say, look, it does exactly what SDI does and no more. We have to be able to do what SDI does and a lot more, a and lot that more. will open up new opportunities. Right, and make it. So the IP competition is pretty stiff, and, but you really need to understand who is focused and, and, and really working in this area, who's participating in the SMPTE standards, who's adopting those standards, and who has people trained and ready to support you, because not all router vendors do. And, and one of when I came in this industry two and a half years ago, it, it felt like this industry was just kind of going sideways. What's great about today that everyone in this room has to admit is that the industry feels like we now have direction. The pace at which certain companies get there, whether it's a broadcaster, a, a producer, a supplier, it's going to take its own course. I think the good news is there's nobody denying that the network is going to be an all IP software defined workflow. Um, and so now you have Catalyst, you have companies like ABC Disney, you have companies like Imagine, you have companies like Cisco and Arista. They're all going to invest hundreds of millions of dollars to help this industry evolve, and, it, and that's why it's going to evolve faster than I think you've seen anything. Um, and so the good news is I walk away from this week feeling like we've accomplished something, because two years ago we were talking about it. Today we're actually deploying it, and I think that you're going to see it continue to evolve in a very positive way. So you think the standards will develop along as, as rapidly as the equipment and yeah. the, uh, the technology? Well, I think you have to select your workflows and your cases that you're going to work on today, okay. the elements yeah. of your workflow, that are ready, right? Because mm -hmm. there are elements that are ready. And then mm -hmm. I'll add one more comment. We, we wanted a, a IP software DA and didn't have one. And Thomas Edwards walked out of his office, went down to the lab, and a day later had written his own software DA for IP. I mean, so, you know, some of these things are going to change pretty dramatically. I predict you will be going to an app store and downloading components for your yep. broadcast infrastructure. <laughs> Mr. Ed